first of all, thanks to you and Lyco for <clears throat> inviting and uh, sharing this opportunity to talk about our work. And most importantly, the I was also like Sudipta mentioned, I was also part of this program for the program managers uh, conducted by Lyco back in nine, 2019. And uh, it was a very new uh, thing for me uh, to enter in the eye care. I come from a very different background. Eye care is a complete new learning for me in the last few years. So I have uh, kind of designed this presentation uh, in a way how we as a program manager or someone who implement the program go through these struggles daily to daily. And there was a lot of uh, wonderful insight and discussion even in the yesterday's uh, session. What are the challenges? What are the issues? How we deal with them? So I tried talking through them, uh, uh, getting some experiences from SEVA program, but also many of these comes from the different uh, SEVA partners uh, in India and outside. And also many of the SEVA colleagues who have started these programs, they went on and they tried. So I will uh, talk through in this uh, 10, 15 minutes, I'll talk through the three different lessons of the different strategies and programs that we have and uh, also why they are important in terms of the project and programs that we are implementing. So uh, first example is around the importance of data and evidence. Dr. Rishi has very scientifically and nicely shown why it is important to track information data that become insightful uh, for us to implement the different programs. Uh, second part of the second example is why it's important to invest in the systems and processes, including the people, because uh, a lot of uh, efficiency in the eye care that is being talked about, especially India being a global leader in terms of the efficiency within the system and outside, like in the clinical system, is also because the right investment in the people by all the stakeholders led by Arvind, LVPI, and many other partners. And third is uh, some of the examples of the programs that we have implemented and bit of the perspective of the attitude as well as the planning part. Because when we talk about programs and project, planning become a very important part of it. So before I go into the little bit detail, uh, I want to briefly touch upon the project management concept itself. I won't go to the uh, a lot more detail, but anyone who have studied project management or have done some kind of a program which is uh, uh, which talks about the step by step evaluation or even the project concept of the project management. So you might uh, many of you might have heard some of these concepts. Uh, actually, project management the concept comes because during the second industrial revolution, they wanted to improve the efficiency of the factories and the everything that is related to manufacturing. And then uh, the concept continuously evolved. Uh, PMI was came up in 70s. It become a big part of the software companies as well as service companies later on. And now there is a lot of concept of the project management that is being used in the software companies also. Uh, what I'm trying to say here is this idea we have taken from the corporate, from the industry. But this, I, the project management itself was never designed for the social development or the health sector or the, the part where human are involved. So although we talk about a lot of these concepts, but they need to adjust a, little, adjust a little bit in terms of the when we work with the people, when we work with a lot of other dynamic factor where uh, and they become a large part of the work we do. So I will not go a lot more in history of that. Uh, but there is a lot of concept and practices that we use from project management in our daily to daily planning. But there is something that I really learned when I was uh, studying project management. So th this theory is called theory of people constraint, where time, cost, and quality. So anything and everything that we do as a project manager, if you want to achieve something as a part of the project, if we plan everything, we will achieve what we are trying to. But for example, if you want to reduce the time, it will either impact cost, you need more money, or it will impact the quality. Same any outreach program or any vision center outreach management that you want to do. Same with the cost. So if you change one, it will impact other two concepts. 
and as a project manager or the program manager or a leader of programs, you will play for on a, one of these constraint to achieve whatever you are trying to achieve. So whenever you say that, for example, a donor is asking report and achievement in lesser time, it will impact either the quality or the cost. So that is the idea behind most of the project management techniques and the concept and theories that has been evolved in last few decades. Uh, why I talked about it? Because it actually very much realistic to the work that we are doing. And you can always read more about it, how it impact others. So because of the time, I don't, I won't go into the lot of details of this one. And all of this information is also readily available online if someone wants to study. Uh, now, as we I noted that it's important to talk about human part of the social development because we are talking about project management, program management. These days, software company talks about agile approach to the project management. End of the day, uh, they have a more controlled factor. But when we work with the people, when we work with the patient, they become something very dynamic and different. So in 2019, when I was, when I came to I care and went to Aravind also to do this course, uh, I think Mr. Nagarajan or someone at the Aravind shared uh, this uh, documentary called Infinite Vision. If you haven't seen it, please uh, see it's a there is a YouTube link on Arvind website, but also it talks about a lot of the human part that generally when we are sitting in the computers talking on the reports, we miss this part. But also I really uh, feel encouraged by the quote uh, that Dr. Venkata Sumi, uh, I mean, it's come, uh, come from the Arvind website and it says that intelligence and capability are not enough. There must, there must be a joy of doing something beautiful. So we as a program people, if we are enjoying whatever we are doing, it becomes less of the burden and more of a uh, achievement and more of a, you, you like, st you start working your own, liking your own work. So it becomes easier, it becomes less of a work, more of a reward. And uh, also when you go through the, this documentary of Infinite Vision, Dr. V says, uh, he was talking probably in some of the conference. He says, here is a soul that has all the simplicity and confidence. He's talking about a lady who came to him for, uh, for the, I think, any eye care problem. Uh, and doctors, uh, he, she says, doctor, whenever you, whatever you say, I accept it. Uh, implicit faith in you and then you respond to it as a doctor that he's sharing in that uh, video. So he said, I must do my best for this lady and how I'm going to train myself to do perfection. So the same applies with any of the person who is part of that care delivery system or care de delivery mechanism within the hospital and now outside of the hospital. How we can continue to train ourselves so we do better, the better version of ourselves, but also talking about perfection and doctor we mentioned. It's more applicable in the program and project that we are doing. So this is the human element doesn't matter which part of the eye care, which program, uh, either with the hospital or the NGO or with the government, this become more important for us uh, who work in the development field versus someone who talk about more of the project part, but uh, more uh, this is designed for the industries and the corporations and someone like that. So with this uh, sim uh, background, I want to talk three examples from the SEVA programs. And it has a long history. So uh, when I was talking with Divya, uh, she mentioned to talk about this one uh, because it has a lot of first that Seva did. And also there was a lot of first for the eye care as well. So Nepal Blindness Survey, this is one of the first thing that Seva as an organization who come together and started and with the help of Arvind and some of the other stakeholders, they did it. So it was first of kind of the comprehensive longitudinal study across multiple uh, zones within the Nepal in world first in many ways, where the prevalence of the blindness came as a like a scientific number, as DC talked about these numbers and how, why it is important to continuously track. Uh, this was one of the very first study where they started uh, talking about cataract and uh, they realized trachoma may not be a bigger problem as it has been talked about back in time. But then it also came up with a lot of other data where 
blindness in women is much higher than any other group of the people and uh, this uh, uh, this was a very risky probably investment now you see in the back back i mean going in the history it might be we are celebrating it we are kind of you no know, very proud of it but those who started it it was a complete new concept no one had an idea there was no established practice and approach so when we are talking about the programs and projects taking risk like taking risk is equally important and why uh, why we continue to invest in data in program and evidences sometime it not may not be clear as of now when you are making this decision but it will have a lot of impact in the different ways uh, even in the future so as a program person it's always important and uh, mr nagarajan will say if you cannot measure it you cannot uh, implement it so the same thing applies in many of the program doesn't matter if it is in hospital vision center or a larger program with we are doing with the district or the government uh, again another data set came very recently uh, investment in eye care has a huge impact uh, there was at i think 10 years ago a lot of money in the nutrition came because a similar study came that nutrition have a very long term impact so if you are able to improve the nutrition for children they will it will improve their life study outcome learning and also the way they will live, live their life uh, so something similar again it's talking about evidence and data uh, doesn't matter if you are talking about one particular project or a larger program or i care as a sector so when we talk about i care uh, especially when i came in i care there was a lot of discussion there is a very less budget for i care but also we need to understand it's not always right that if you have a lot of budget it become a program of the super most important one example is one program of ministry of rural development mg narega mahatma gandhi rural employment program have almost the same budget equivalent to the ministry of health total budget that is only one program of rural but can we come up with the conclusion that uh, health program are lesser important than one program of the rural development not so uh, budget is part of the process that goes to uh, achieve certain things but even if there is a lesser budget or more budget we can of course argue there is a need of more budget but maximum budget never means it's a program for the which is the most important one for government because uh, government decide the uh, priorities based on many other factors and higher budget should not be the indicator of that this is the most important for the government although we need more investment in the eye care through the different programs so that they also talked about uh, pmjy why it is important and why it has fueled a lot of uh, surgery in the different areas where there were no uh, not excess so again uh, coming back to the original point which is putting right evidence into the system for projects and program second example that i want to briefly touch upon is the investment in the uh, allied ophthalmic personal cadre itself uh, and i would say that many of the people in this room have uh, a lot more knowledge than probably what i can share here but one thing on which we as a country or india as a country is proud that our eye care program is one of the most effective we we provide the surgery best of the quality cheapest in the cost we are able to deliver the uh, the uh, the kind of care which is equivalent to any of the western world uh, hospitals but also being able to employ more people have more human factor in that and if you go to of the howard study uh, are from india one from arvind and lbpi talking about eye care efficiency and clinical efficiency and this particular cadre have a very important role into this so seva's investment has been i would say the continuous uh, sustained initially through the arvind lot into the design part of it uh, they have been involved in many of them uh, and so mr nagarajan and others but also we continue to slowly invest never been a, one of the top program but still we invest in the excel training which is a training of trainers we also continue to invest in the setting up these kind of a training and curriculum even in the newer hospitals where this concept is completely new and uh, we believe that if efficiency is something that is going to drive i care in many ways 
especially when we are going to compete with more private hospitals because of the PMGY. Uh, NGO hospitals will be uh, pushed towards greater quality, greater outcome, and greater efficiency. So again, this is another, I would say, the not the pro project itself, but the long-term program which has sustained outcome. And we have been investing it because it may not have an instant result, but in the longer term, it has a lot of uh, efficiency, efficiency level outcome, but also the overall sustainability of the hospitals has improved because of the uh, having this cadre. Uh, another example before I wrap up. So all of the investment, all of the program by Seba is not means that they have succeed very well. Uh, the the two the two example I shared are where we have done well or uh, with the partners and partner also celebrate and recognize it. So this is one program we implemented in between 2016 to 2020. There was a lot of set of the indicators that we uh, taken and we still continue to measure all of these indicators. Uh, within the program, it was a huge program, 50, more than 50 hospitals, and it took up the approach of SEVAs where mentor hospitals were uh, kind of guiding and building the capacity of the mentee smaller hospitals. In terms of the many areas, I just took these four indicators, we, which we were mapping then and we are still mapping. Uh, by end of the program, we are able to achieve only three of them uh, out of these five that are listed. Uh, and then uh, when we submitted the final impact report, we said that uh, percentage of uh, cataract surgery performed were not as we probably have planned for. So we intended to increase more than 50% from the baseline. I think if I remember correctly, it was somewhere around 46% what we have increased from the baseline. Another outcome was uh, when, and these are, were planned in 2016, a long time back when we started talking about these definitions. So increase the post-operative visual outcome of the hospitals, 85% or better, uh, that what we wanted to achieve. And it was done actually in 2019 before COVID, uh, close to 60% hospital have achieved this outcome. Again, uh, we wanted to have more than 50% women in the, uh, getting the cataract surgery in the partner hospitals, which was uh, somewhere around 46%, but we were not able to, sorry, 47%, but we were not able to reach to 50% only. Same with the increase in the revenue from the cataract surgery as well as uh, cataract, uh, sorry, spect uh, spectacle acceptance. Uh, what I'm trying to make a point is, although we couldn't achieve them by 2019, but some of these indicators, as we continue to monitor, uh, they have improved a lot. Uh, one, because there has been a constant focus and there has been a lot of effort by the partner hospitals as well as uh, the data that we have been tracking. So in 2016, when we started this intervention, the OPD in the partner hospitals were 21 lakh, uh, close to 50 to 55 hospital which increased to 37 lakh in 2019-20 when we increased, when we stopped this program. But still, uh, at this moment in the last year, the same group of hospital have 44 lakh of OPD in the system, which is like more than 100% increase in the last, uh, last 10 year or so. Actually, last eight year. Similarly, if you see the... Uh, surgical acceptance in these part hospitals. 16, it was 36% increase to 47% in 1920, which is on a, a whole set of the 50-55 hospital. It is 68% at this moment. So again, the program couldn't achieve whatever we intend to, but even those failure and everything that we put into the systems and processes and training and mentoring, and there was a vision building process for each hospital done by the mentor hospital. It has resulted in uh, uh, more than uh, uh, more than thirty percent increase in the acceptance of the surgery in those hospitals. So again, all of the project that we plan for, I have the data for others, but I will stop maybe here and uh, go back to the discussion what we wanted for. Uh, everything that we thrive or aim for may not be achieved in a in a way we want, but the continuous investment and perseverance is something that bring the result in the longer term and come, because we are working with humans, a lot of dynamic factors, as well as the systems and processes, 
it may take some time but if you continue to put uh, continue to invest in the people and right kind of system and processes it will bring the result to the project or the program we want to thank you